Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, I do mean over the top, beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this gorgeous, I think it is Thursday, May 20th, 2021. And good Lord guys, I have been so busy trying to get this place ready for uh, the grand opening of the Bugs in a Jar farm hip camp grand opening one week from tomorrow that I have had no time to pay any attention to the collapse of a civilization and a planet so uh, I just decided to check in pretty much with my my emails going over here to collapse chronicles at gmail.com and good lord and seeing what's on your minds that you think needs to be shared with the tribe. And guys, uh, I don't know how many stories I have here, so I'm just gonna touch on these <coughs> and then get back to work. Oh, good old Bill McKibben. Uh, we're gonna start off with Bill McKibben here in the New Yorker. Yes, Bill McKibben uh, talking about the particular psychology of destroying a planet. Bill is asking the question, or the editors are asking the question, what kind of thinking goes into engaging in planetary sabotage? Well, uh, I, I think Bill ought to know. I, I mean, isn't he one of the biggest hawkers of biofuels? Isn't Bill McKibben the biggest cheerleader of, uh, you know, clear-cutting huge areas of forest, chipping them up and sending them to Europe to burn as biofuels? Uh, anyone who has not seen the planet of the humans is the single best cameo by Bill McKibben I have ever seen in a documentary. I think Bill McKibben was one of the people suing, trying to get Planet of the Humans removed. Maybe we will come back to uh, that eco-hypocrite Bill McKibben at a later date, but I'm just going to go on down. This is just the order that you guys have sent me stuff. How about from, I guess this is foreign policy. Big agriculture is leading to ecological collapse. Actually, big is not best. Yes. Today, there is more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere than at any point in the past 3.6 million years. Alright, on April 5th, atmospheric carbon dioxide exceeded 420 parts per million. We are now at 420 and rising, uh, marking nearly the halfway point toward doubling the carbon dioxide levels measured prior to the Industrial Lev Revolution. Uh, even amid a corona panic induced economic shutdown during which global annual emissions supposedly dropped 7%, carbon dioxide and methane levels set records in 2020. Um, the last time Earth held this much CO2 in its atmosphere, sea levels were nearly 80 feet higher, and the planet was 7 degrees Fahrenheit warmer. The catch? Homo sapiens did not yet exist then. Yep, and so this obviously is breaking down industrial agriculture leading to ecological collapse on a lot more than the CO2 levels. All right, let's go over here to good old CBS News. Blue spot on map reveals a warning for the climate. Yes, 
uh, what they're talking about is this blue spot, this area of ice cold fresh water just off the southern coast of, uh, of Greenland. Uh, you know the one we're talking about, um, which is, of course, having to do, uh, it's related to the slowdown of the Gulf Stream, also known as the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, or AMOC, a vital system of ocean currents underpinning the global climate system. Uh, it's clear from the map the greatest warming on Earth is happening in the Arctic. Uh, due to rapid warming, Arctic sea ice extent during its yearly minimum has been sliced in half. Uh, Greenland is melting six times faster than in the 1990s. Uh, all of this melting water is throwing the Gulf Stream out of balance. That is because the Gulf Stream system relies on cold, dense, salty water to sink in the northern Atlantic, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the Gulf Stream is now moving at the slowest it has in at least 1,600 years and research shows that the system will likely continue to weaken, perhaps slowing by 45% by the end of the century. Uh, anyway, and it goes on from there. Okay, from the Gulf Stream to pretty much anywhere in Russia, more than 60% of Russian territory is permafrost. Now it is melting. Climate change is about to dramatically change the Russian north. Yes, the country is now starting building a new permafrost monitoring system. Mm-hmm. Yes, across the country's north, buildings, roads, and industrial installations are sliding into the ground. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, there you go. And of course, what's true for Russia is true for a big swaths of Canada, Alaska. Everywhere else. What is going on with the wild horses? I, I could do a whole video. I am I have always been conflicted about these wild mustangs, which are invasive species. Uh, but of course, there used to be a wild horse in what's now known as the US. But of course, the first wave of invaders, you know, the Native Americans, they just killed every one of those wild horses and put them in the stew pot and never learned to ride them. And uh, so now we've got a, a big mess. I don't know, what do you do with the wild horses? Wild horses adopted under a federal program are going to slaughter and this is really more of a story about humans than it is about horses. Um, talking about what this is, this, this, this scam that's going on, the Bureau of Land Management uh, actually was paying $1,000 to, uh, to take these horses. Uh, and paying people, so take a wild guess, so people went all of these, so they announced this program and immediately, uh, you can imagine how many people were lining up to get paid $1,000 of taxpayers' money to rescue these wild horses 
and then what do you think they did a few weeks later? They put them on the same truck and they took them to the slaughterhouse and sold them to the slaughterhouse. Uh, anyway, this is, this is probably a rant for another channel, but, uh, you know, humans. Okay, <clears throat> from the conversation, I love it, when they ask a question in a headline, if Earth falls, if Earth falls, what they mean by this, if global industrial civilization collapses, and humans start getting closer to extinction, will interstellar space travel be our salvation? The answer to the question, will interstellar space travel be our salvation, is no, it will not. Okay. Some climatologists argue it may be too late to reverse climate change, you know, here on the blue planet. And it is just a matter of time before the Earth becomes uninhabitable. Yes, the recent movie Interstellar raised the notion that we may one day have to escape our dying planet. Mm-hmm. But is this practical or even possible? Or is there a better solution? Yes, there is a better solution. It is the final solution. And that's have humans go voluntarily extinct. But speaking of human extinction, guys, you know, this, this is the, the rant I have always had in the back of my head about this BS story. And we've been hearing it for years. <clears throat> it's in the news again about these falling sperm rates driving humans extinct, that uh, sperm rates are supposed to be down 50%. Uh, I've always uh, put my BS filter on this story, and I am glad to see the telegraph blowing the whistle on this. Threat of human extinction from falling sperm counts greatly exaggerated, says Harvard. Um, a Harvard University study has found academics have previously raised fears that humanity's long-term survival was under threat by the rate at which sperm counts are currently falling. Uh, however, Fertility experts, at least at, at Harvard, now believe the research conducted in this area has been based on a number of, quote, scientifically and ethically problematic assumptions, close quote. Uh, and the bottom line, well, a team at Harvard <clears throat> Uh, found sperm count varies within a wide range, much of which is not caused by medical conditions and is influenced by genetics, and most importantly, the, the obvious question or answer, above a critical threshold, meaning a threshold of one, uh, as far as I'm concerned, above a critical threshold, a high sperm count is not necessarily an indicator of better health or higher probability of conception. And what they're talking about here, you know, every time a guy, uh, what word do I use on this channel? You know the word I'm looking for. Every time a, well, at least a man who doesn't have a vasectomy comes, what is it, like 10 million, 10 million uh, of, of these little things. So a 50% reduction in sperm rates, instead of 10 million, there's 5 million. Okay, there's one egg, and there's somewhere between 5 and 10 million of these. Little, all it takes is one of those little suckers. Uh, you know, this crap 
uh, about falling sperm rates. I wish um, I have a sperm rate of exactly zero. Anyway, enough of that crap. I'm not sure what this has to do with the collapse of a planet. Probably more than you think. Uh, this is a story about humans, uh, also from the Telegraph. Six percent, six percent of Americans believe they could beat a grizzly bear in a fight. Yes, six percent of Americans believe they could beat up a grizzly bear in unarmed combat, but on the other side of the coin, almost a third of Americans think they would lose in a fight against a rat or a house cat. A new survey <laughs> has found, I mean, I mean uh, there's all sorts of, re of uh, indicators of the collapse of uh, civilization and the extinction of the human race on both sides of that coin. And uh, my guess is that, have you ever gotten in a fight with a cornered rat? Uh, I might take the damn grizzly bear over the rat. Uh, I'm sure the 6% of Americans who believe they could beat up a grizzly bear, I would love those 6% of Americans to prove it. Anyway, well, I think we already uh, uh, mentioned this in a former article. Uh, new er early warning signals alert of Greenland ice sheet tipping point. The central western part of the Greenland ice sheet could, quote, undergo a critical <clears throat> transition relatively soon Close quote, scientists warn in a new study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, uh, a group of international researchers from Germany and Norway report that destabilization of the ice sheet is underway and further melting could escalate. <clears throat> Most concerningly, the researchers say that the ice sheet could reach a tipping point that would lead to a long-term global sea level rise where oceans would climb by several meters if the ice sheet fully melted. And uh, then I remember seeing uh, a very similar story. Uh, yeah, here we go from, uh, this is also from the conversation Scientists now believe Antarctica is headed for a climate change tipping point by 2060. Um, <clears throat> while U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken draws attention to the climate change in the Arctic, uh, this week in Iceland an even greater threat looms on the other side of the planet. New research shows it is Antarctica that may force a reckoning between the choices countries make today about greenhouse gas emissions and the future survival of their coastlines and coastal cities from New York to Shanghai. That reckoning may come much sooner than people realize the Arctic is losing ice as global temperatures rise, and that is directly affecting lives and triggering feedback loops that fuel more warming. But the big wild card for sea level rise is actually Antarctica. It holds enough ice to raise global sea levels by more than 200 feet roughly 10 times the amount of the Greenland ice sheet, and we are already seeing signs of trouble. Yes, we are. Okay. 
What do I got? One more. Let's do one more, guys. I have a lot. I need to figure out how to move this damn shed. So we're going to wrap up somewhere in the budding war between Spain and Morocco. Uh, many versions of this story. This is just AP's version of this story. Spain and Morocco square off after 8,000 migrants arrive by sea. Spain deployed its military to the Moroccan border Tuesday and expelled nearly half of the thousands of migrants who jumped fences or swam onto European soil over two days after Rabat, I guess that's in Morocco, loosened border controls amid a deepening diplomatic spat. Overwhelmed soldiers separated the adults from the young, good Lord, and carried children in their arms while Red Cross workers helped an endless trickle of migrants who were emerging from the water, shivering and exhausted. The sudden influx of migrants has fueled a diplomatic spat between Morocco and Spain over the disputed Western Sahara region and created a humanitarian crisis for Ceuta, the Spanish city of 85,000 on the Mediterranean Sea, separated from Morocco by a 10 meter fence. Now, and you're led to believe that who's coming over the fence are Moroccans, uh, from the Saharan, uh, you know, from the very northern coast of Africa. And you can look at the pictures yourself and you tell me if these look like Moroccans. Uh, doesn't look like any Moroccan I've ever seen, but I've never seen a Moroccan, so maybe I don't know what a Moroccan looks like. But anyway, you know, as I was reading last week, more and more, you're going to see uh, whoever it is, you know, as, as a response to the falling birth rates. More and more, you're going to see the cheerleading of just opening Europe up to African migrants and opening the United States up to uh, Latin American uh, migrants to, uh, you know, to come in and start breeding to, br to bring up the birth rates of these falling birth rate countries, but I've already had that rant two or three times. I don't need to repeat it again, but anyway, I'm going to just wrap it up here. I can go on with this, guys, and uh, but it is a gorgeous day, and as I say, I need to figure out how to move this shed across my yard is my uh, challenge of the day. So wish me luck, and I suggest you get out there and move your shed while you still can. Bye, guys. Yes, so long.